Hi guys. Happy December. Um I hope wherever you are it's not as cold as it is here in in where I am. Um today's sermon Thank you for joining me today. Today's sermon is called um Stranger in My House. Let's pray. Father, I thank you. I give you praise for this time together. It is indeed a privilege and the highest honor I have to speak on your behalf. Father, thank you for choosing me for this for this wonderful privilege. Um Lord Jesus, let me say something to touch every heart. Thank you for every heart, every spirit, every every soul that will be delivered, that will be healed, that will be refreshed, Lord God, that will be restored today. In the name of Jesus, speak to me and speak through me. In the name of Jesus, amen. Okay, so I, as many of you know, that know me, I love music of all kinds. I love everything from rock to R&B to gospel and Christian and everything. So, and I often base my sermons on music. A few weeks ago, I did a sermon based on the Shawn Mendes song, um, In My Blood, and I called it the, the Blood That Matters. And if you look at my early sermons, if you go back in my channel and look at my early sermons, all my early sermons were based on, on songs. I've always had a unique, of t a unique way of taking secular songs and turning them around for, for the kingdom. And as I was thinking of um, the sermon today, last week, I was, um, I was listening to uh, Stranger in My House by Tamiya. It's an, it's a 90s song. Uh, by this person named Tamiya. And what the song is basically about is about this woman who's living with a man, but um, I don't know if they're married or just dating or whatever, but um, he's like, she's, he's like, she's like, um, there's a stranger in my house. Like, he, he is not the same person that she met and fell in love with. Like, the, they, they are, they, they, they are living together, but they're strangers. They don't kiss anymore. They don't hug anymore. They don't, you know, they don't even make love anymore. They're just roommates, basically, and and she she's saying there's a stranger in my house. It took a while to figure out. Um, and she and he's uh, she's saying you look like the same man, but you're a complete stranger to me, and. The Lord, as I was listening to this song, and when I when a song hits me for a sermon, I usually get an inkling the first time that the Lord that the Lord wants to say something through this song, and then I have to listen to it a couple times, couple times to get the full weight of what God wants to say, and a. About the the third or fourth time, God 
said to me, um, this woman is talking about this man that she once loved being, being now a stranger in her house. But Rachel, what if the stranger in her house is actually herself? Um, he said, if you take it out of the context of the woman and the man, he said, many people are living with strangers, but the strangers that they're living with are not other people. Those are situations, too, where you meet someone, you fall in love, and the person changes, and you don't even recognize that person anymore. That happens, too. Or your kids hit puberty, and you're like, who is this person? I don't even know this person. He's like, but today, uh, what if the stranger that you're living with is yourself? And he said, that's what I want you to talk about today. I want you to talk about the stranger in your house, the stranger that lives within you, which is the person you don't even know. In, in, a, in a negative and a positive way. So I'm going to tackle it today on both, in both ways, because there's, um, there's a negative way, there's a challenging way that I want to challenge you to get to know yourself, and there's a positive way I want to talk about the stranger in your house. When I say your house, I don't mean your physical home where you live physically. When I'm talking about your house, I'm talking about your body because I heard somebody say one time, you're a spirit, you, you have a soul, you're living in the body, or you're, or you're a human, you're not, like, you're not a, you're not a human having a spiritual experience, but you're a spirit having a human experience. Well, I didn't say that, but I heard that said, and that's when I say your house, I mean, your body. And I think one of the main problems today is um, people don't know themselves, really. And when you don't know yourself, the world can tell you who you really are, who, 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 they, who, sorry, who they think you should be. And that may not be who you really are. And the assignment on your life is not to find out what your purpose is, really. It's to get to know who you really are. Because once you know who you really are, who God has made you to be, who God has crafted you to be, your purpose is a natural outflow of that. So I would say, and this might be a little controversial, I would say if you don't know your purpose, you don't know who you really are because your purpose and what you're supposed to do in your life is connected to who you really are. And you could say, Rachel, how do I find out who I really am? Good question. The way to 
find out who you really are is to first get to know God. Um, and second, and when you get to know God, he will show you yourself. And third, when you get to know yourself, that outflow will speak to others and they can confirm what God has said about you. See, people can't define you. They can only confirm what God has said about you. I'll say that again. People should not define you. They should confirm what God has said about you. What I mean by that is your definition of yourself shouldn't come from what people say about you. Your definition of yourself should come from what God says about you, and it should flow what you, to what you say about you, and that, and that people come along as resources to confirm what God says about you. So, so let's say, um, let's say, let's take where David said, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. David said that in Psalms 139. But first of all, God spoke to David and David got that in his spirit and was able to declare it from his mouth. Because, so God says something about you. And then that gets into your spirit and becomes a declaration that fo flows out of your mouth. So that's how you find out who you are. Get to know God, and then he, he will flow into your spirit who you really are. And then from that, you, people come along to confirm who you really are. Because if you get people to define who you are, you'll be changing who you are every day of the week, depending on uh, whatever wind or trend or social media post is hot at the time. But at your core, God has, there, God has designed you to be certain things. And to get those things, it takes relationship and time alone with the Lord and to ask certain questions. I think, you know, sometimes you can't hear God because of the noise around you. And the Lord is saying today, get rid of the noise. Get rid of all the noise and just ask him the hard questions about who you are. And, and when you discover who you are, you 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 will discover your purpose. Who you are is not what you do. Who you are is defined by who God has created you to be. And there are some basic things that God has created us to be. First of all, you are His. 
first of all, every human being on the planet is his. Um, the only the only difference is some people have no idea that they are his. They they have no idea of the treasure that he's put in them. And that's the only difference I think between uh, Christians and non-Christians is the awareness that, that they are indeed made and handcrafted by God. Just get that in your get get that in your spirit today, that you are His. You are His, and no one can no one can take that from you, and that's such a truth. And that kind of heavy to embrace that the God of all the universe, the God that created everything, that you are his. He calls you his own. He doesn't call you his own when you say the sinner's prayer or whatever prayer that you say to accept him. That only means that you accept being his. You are his from the time of conception, not from the time of salvation. You are his from the time of conception. And he wants you to get that in your spirit today. You are his from the time of conception. And all all salvation does is that you receive the fact that you are his. And that it brings awareness um, to the fact that you are his. And some people may agree, may disagree with me. And say salvation says you are his, you are his, but no, because the earth is the Lord's, the world and they that dwell therein. They, it doesn't say Christians are the Lord's, the world and they that dwell therein. Nope, nope. It said God so loved the world, not God so loved Christians or God so loved, um, and God so loved those that call on this thing. No, God loves everyone. And uh, in Genesis, it says, God breathed into man and man became a living soul. And when you give something breath, when you give something life, when you create something, it is yours. Um, I'm an I'm an amateur songwriter, so when I create a song, it doesn't matter who sings it, it doesn't matter who records it. It is still mine. It is still mine. It, unless I give the rights away and sign it away legally in, in by legal means, it is still mine. And when God breathed into man, he didn't breathe into Christians. He breathed into man, and man became a living soul. It didn't say Christians became a living soul. It said man, meaning man and woman. Um, So, and salvation is just the acknowledgement on your side that yes, I accept that I am yours. 
take over my life. That's what salvation does. But from the time you are born, you are his. You are his, whether you whatever faith you're from, what what or even if you're from no faith, I would argue that you are his. Because he breathed into you and you became a living soul. He he made sure that specific sperm and that specific egg got together to create you. So you were created by God. You were knit together in your mother's womb. The right mother and the right father got together to create you. So when you you get pregnant, it's not your it's not the woman's, it's not the man's. What it is is God's. What the embryo is, that embryo is not. The woman is just the house. Really, the embryo is God's. So, so, and God wants today to, to, to tell you who you are. So to get to know the stranger in your house, first of all, you need to get to know the one who created you. And it's not only by reading the Bible and, you know, reading scripture a day. That's one way to get to know the one who created you. But you could, you could just, you know that you could just ask God simple questions about how he feels about certain things and just get to know him like you get to know your friends, get to know your, you know, family members. He wants you to ask those questions like, I ask him questions all the time. We could be watching TV and I'm like, "Uh, God, how do you feel about that? And he'll filter into my spirit how he feels about that, how he feels about that certain issue. And we can walk and talk together. But he wants that garden-like kind of relationship with you. When I say garden-like, um, it said in the word of God, before what we call the fall, Adam walked with God in the cool of the day. And I believe that God wants that relationship with his children back. He wants the relationship where you can ask him anything, where you can talk about anything with him in a non in a non-religious way, it just, he'll answer you, and you can talk to him, like, it's so, it's so weird, like, my relationship with God is, like, kind of the weirdest thing you could ever, you could ever imagine, because I talk to him the way I'm talking to you right now, uh, it, and it, and you'll, you'll wonder where all of this is coming from because where all my sermons come from, they come from not me spending hours in the Word, although in the Word is so awesome, they mostly come from me talking to him, me asking questions, me communing with him. I think sometimes uh, my disability is a gift. The fact that I can't pick up a Bible 
And the fact that I can't study the way some people study, I can audio listen to a Bible, but even there, I have to listen to a whole chapter. So most of the time, I don't do that. Most of the time, I just enjoy talking to Jesus. And I talk to him about every issue that's on my heart, everything that's on my mind. So that's how I know myself really, really well. Because when something comes up, I'm like, God, why did I act like that? And he says, I'm glad you asked. And he starts to reveal to me, me. So through knowing him, I get to know me because he knows me inside out. The problem with the church today is we are so busy with with the business of Christianity. Oh, I have to read the Bible in this way, or I have to do it this way, or I have to worship this time of day, or whatever, that we don't even know that we could ask him all of the questions in our heart. We can... We don't have to even yell and complain. We can just ask him stuff. We don't even have to ask him stuff when thing go, things goes wrong. Like anything that's concerning us, we can ask him about. Or when when things are go, going haywire, we can ask him about that. Or when we need something, we can ask him. Like, who can I go to for that? Or we can say, you know you know, I need this, and leave it with him, and he will answer it in his time. And I think um, being without the ability to do things for myself really has given me an understanding of how to depend on him. And we have the most interesting conversations. Uh, I've had the most interesting conversations about sex and how to deal with my hormones and and all those things from how to deal with my money, how to balance my checkbook, how to deal with family members, how to deal with my attendance. Because I have that relationship and because the Lord has shown me who I am. And when when I need to, he sends the proper resources. So I would say, God, I, I need to, I think I need to talk to a friend. Who would be the right friend? friend to talk to about this and he would just uh, a name would flash in my mind going talk to that person and I would talk to that person then we would share ideas and whatever when you get to know God everything comes into alignment he will show you how to find purpose. He will show you uh, what people and what resources to bring through and, you know, all of that stuff. Because preachers can tell you things, but ba- but really, it's in, in their experience, it is what works for them. It may not be what works for you, But if you get to know God, he knows your lifestyle. He knows what you need. He knows what you can handle. And he knows um, how to teach you what he wants to teach you. And he wants you to get to know the stranger in your house. And the way to get to know the stranger in your house is to get to know God. And 
when you get to know God, he'll illuminate stuff about you that you'll be like, oh, really? I'm like that? And he'll be like, and you'll, he'll be like, yeah, you're like that. And the communication with you and God will become stronger and stronger. And he'll show you how he communicates with you, how he connects with you, what works for you, what doesn't work for you, why you get pissed off at certain things. He'll show you all that. But he's dying for a real relationship with you. He's dying for a relationship with you that goes beyond hallelujah, beyond your Bible. He wants to walk with you, talk with you. He wants to show you about your kids. He wants to show you about your life, how to deal with this family member, how to deal with this situation, what therapist to go to, what resources to read. He wants to show you how to deal with your life. He wants to be a partner in your life. He doesn't want this, there to be a stranger in your house. He wants you to know yourself very well. And the only way to get to know yourself is to get to know him. Because he could show you, well, you need to slow down. You need to do this. And um, it's best if you do this. Do it this way, not this way, or he'll just guide you with you in your life in a way you need to be guided. Because every life has little, um, has little um, inter- intricacies that are not in other people's other people's lives. So. He knows what you need, and he knows how you need to do it. He knows what lessons you need to learn, and he knows what you need to do. So how to get to know the stranger in your house is to get to know God, because God will illuminate you. He will show you all the parts of you. He will alleviate whatever concerns you have and and he will take you through what you need to go through and yes it will be challenging sometimes but he doesn't but he doesn't do do challenges without a reason when god takes you through challenges it's it's always to bring something greater out of you it's never to frustrate you, but if you if you get to know him, you will get to know yourself. And sometimes the greatest way, most well, times the greatest way to get to know yourself is uh, in the challenges in your life. So to get to know the stranger in your house is to get to know God, because God will show you all the intricacies about yourself and your and your life, and he will even give you revelation about the people in your life. He will tell you what your kids need and how they need it and how to be a better parent, how to be a better sister, how to be a better brother, um, when to step off, when to step in, what to do about this issue, and when to leave it alone, when to say something. And it has just been a gift getting to know the Lord. And he wants you to get to know him past the religious way. He wants to be in your life. He wants to be watching Netflix with you. He wants to be chilling with you. And he, because he wants a relationship with you. He doesn't just want to be chilling with you 
to correct you. We sometimes think God, all God wants to do is correct us and take us through hard times. No, he just wants to be with you. He wants to be a part of your life. He wants to be with you when you're driving your car, when you're taking the bus, when you're taking disabled transit. Whatever you're doing, he wants to be right up in your space and right up in your life because he knows what's best for you. He knows what's coming for you. And he wants, he knows the way that you should go. He wants to be right up in your space right up in your life because he enjoys you let me just say that god the god of the universe enjoys being with you it's a joy when he sees you smile when he sees you laugh when he sees you do those things it's a joy for him and he just wants me to say he enjoys you today. He enjoys you. He loves you so much. And he loves to see you smile. He loves to see you laugh. He loves to see you get excited. He loves to see you get passionate. He loves, he just loves, he just loves the snot out of you, my friend. He loves every hair on your head. He just, he just wants me to say he wants to love on you today. Let him love on you. He won't hurt you. He won't hurt you. You don't have to trust me, but trust what he's saying to you right now. You feel that pulling on your heart. He's tugging on you right now, and he wants me to say he's saying, I won't hurt you. He says, I know it's hard for you to trust, but that's okay. He's like, that's okay. We'll do this thing together. And you, will, when you get to know me, you will get to know. There will be no stranger in your house because you will know yourself. And the truth and the truth will set you will set you free. And when you get to know God and when you when God chose you yourself, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. The reason why lies are confounding your brain is because you don't know God. You only know uh what What's in the Bible and what's in the Bible has not become real to you yet. It's only become words on a page, but he wants to take you past that. And he wants to give you revelation about yourself and those in your life. And revelation firstly about him, then about yourself, then those in your life. And he wants a wonderful relationship with you. It's so phenomenal. Thank you, God, for sharing yourself with us today. Thank you, God, for being with us, for wanting to show us the stranger in our house, for wanting to show us not only our purpose, but who we really are to you. We love on you, all, all the love that you've, you've, uh, you've given to us. Thank you, God. We bless you and praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. And all you have to do with God is just be real. Is just tell him where you are, and he'll take it from there, wherever you are. Just tell him. And it might feel strange, really, when you tell him, but it's okay. What have you got to lose? I'm not going to say a prayer with you because the Lord wants to hear you right now. The Lord wants to hear where you're at, where you struggle, 
where you're feeling. He wants to hear you right now. And there is there is no specific way to do it. Just just believe and confess. And even if you don't believe fully, it's all right. Just don't be afraid don't be afraid to look stupid because that looking stupid will change your life. That looking ridiculous will restore you. Like I I I'd gladly look stupid for restoration if it means that I could have a relationship with the God who loves me. What if you got to lose? Nothing. It doesn't need to sound pretty. It doesn't need to do anything like that. All it needs to be is from your, from your spirit, from your mouth, from your heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So show him, tell him right now what's in your heart. And if you need help, know that I'm on Facebook. I'm everywhere that you could ever, ever want to be. And I'd be happy to help you. Bye. Thanks. And I'm on YouTube, too, so if you are watching this saying that I, I said I need the Lord, but I need more information, uh, don't be afraid to message me. Don't be afraid to message me on Facebook or YouTube or Instagram. I check all of them every, every day. Take care. Bye. And if you have a friend or somebody who can, who you think can benefit from this sermon, don't be afraid to share it. Bye.